Hello, guten Tag and welcome back to another Cinematography Breakdown. Since it is launch week of my online course Interview Masterclass, where I will be teaching you everything you need to know about shooting high class interviews, we will break down an interview today. And if you're interested in getting my Interview Masterclass, it is live now and there's a link down in the description below. The interview I'm about to break down is of a former musician that turned professional poker player and his struggle with his family and friends and his transitioning into doing something that he loved instead of doing something that he was expected to do. The full Porto documentary isn't out yet, but I can still show you the interview setup. Let's start with the equipment that we were using. We were using two Canon C70s, both equipped with the Canon Focal Reducer and we had a 50mm 1.4 Sigma art lens for our medium shot as well as a Sigma 85mm 1.4 for our close-up shot. We wanted to get rid of some of this digital sharpness that the Sigma art lenses provide, so we added a one quarter diffusion filter on both of our lenses. In order to be able to judge our framing as well as exposure, we used a 7 inch on camera switch monitor on each of our C70s. Our close up angle was on a motorized slider with a pan head, and the one that we used was from Zipon. It was the Micro 2 version with a Pons pan head. I will touch a little bit more on this in the composition section. For audio setup, we used a Daddy S Mic 2S hypercardioid shotgun microphone directly hooked up to a Zoom F6 recorder. We boomed this out in front of our subject to get a really nice crisp audio. As a backup audio, we also had him laughed up with a tentacle track E microphone hidden underneath his clothes. In the edit afterwards, we only used the shotgun microphone, but it's always great to have a backup audio solution in place. Und dann kam irgendwann der Punkt, wo ich gemerkt habe, okay, und das ist jetzt gleich auch irgendwann der Sprung zum Poker, dass ich gemerkt habe, ich muss meinen Weg gehen. Ich mache es irgendwie allen recht, aber ich bin nicht zu mir ehrlich genug und habe dann auch mal gesagt, okay, ich werde so nicht glücklich werden. Here are our camera settings. We used autofocus on both of our Canon C70s and we used the mode where it only focuses on people's faces instead of anything else. And especially in a situation with good lighting, this is really reliable and you can safely use this for most of your interviews. The camera was set to 25 frames with 180 degree shutter rule, six stops of ND and an ISO of 400. The white balance of our camera was set to 5600 Kelvin to match the outside light coming in. Now let's talk about our location. When looking for a location, we were looking for a really modern but industrial vibe that is really hip right now. So we found this great loft and this was really huge. So we had different sets for all the commercials that we shot as well as all the interview setups. The location also provided us with great choices of furniture as well as huge windows and we even had some guitars hanging in the background which was perfect for our interview about a musician. We found this location online and it was 1200 euros a day and we rented it for three days for this commercial shoot. Next up let's talk about the composition that we chose. We placed our couch at an angle so we did get the big window in the background in frame having the window frame our subject vertically. The window frames also gave us some leading lines towards the eyes of our subject, drawing the attention to our interviewee's face. We also wanted to make sure that we get both guitars in the background, because again, we were talking about a musician and I thought this was a cool easter egg. As for the composition of our subject itself, we chose a standard interview setup with abiding the rule of thirds, placing him on one third of our frame having enough looking room so that our viewers feel comfortable and we're not really cramped in. When it comes to the close-up shot on our slider, we also made sure that we use a pan hat so that we could add a parallax effect, having our slider move from left to right without changing our initial composition. Now let's move on to the lighting for this scene. As we always do on our interview setups, we exposed for the background first and accounted for the lights that we can change and this was the huge window and all its light coming in from the outside. Here we wanted to find a balance of still seeing some details but not having it completely exposed correctly and it being distracting. After we find an exposure that we were happy with, we started to bring in our own lights. And here as a key light, we used the Intellitec Mega 8 and this is a huge light mat with a softbox. We placed our key light on our camera right, having it motivated by a window because we could see a huge window as a light source, so we wanted to have our key light mimic another window like this. 
this is also why we set the color temperature of our light mat to 5600 Kelvin. And the cool thing about this light mat is that it has a rectangular shape so that if we see some catch light in our subject's eyes, it suggests that this is actually a window instead of a parabolic softbox with a round shape. And these little details make your overall scene look really believable and really natural. I wanted to create some contrast with our key light, so I placed it at an angle that we created a Rembrandt lighting. And we achieved this by shooting shadow side, meaning we took all of our cameras, placed them on the shadow side of our subject's face and therefore maintaining this three-dimensional feel. We shot this interview a while ago and this was the Megalight Cloth 2.0 and meanwhile I would 100% recommend the new version, the 3.0. I already have two of those lights and I use them for basically everything right now. And if you're interested, I will put a link down to all the equipment that we used in this video. Since I like the contrast level that we were provided with, I didn't add any fill light or negative fill. I still think that there was enough detail on the shadow side of our subject's face, but enough to make it look really nice and contrasty. To separate our subject from the background a little bit more, I also added a hair light. For this we used a small rig 120 watts UB light, and we boomed this high up above our subject with a small parabolic softbox. The reason why we boomed our light high up instead of just having it stand out of frame is because of our close-up angle was moving and therefore we had a lot more wriggle room when it came to the framing on our moving camera angle. Here we could get away with only using two lights, our key light as well as our hair light because we had such a great location and this huge window in the background that also created some levels and depth in our image that we only needed to bring in two of our own lights and not have to light the place with any additional lights. At the very end, let's talk a little bit about color grading. Since we shot everything on the Canon C70 in C-Log2 in Cinema Gamut, we needed to bring our log image back to Rec. 709. The way I did this is with the original Canon conversion LUT. I added this and I already had a pretty decent looking image. I knew that I wanted to go really filmic looking and contrasty on this one. So I added the high noon LUT from my custom diamond LUT pack. And if you're interested in that one, there's also a link down in the description below. To sell the filmic look even more, I added a film emulation plugin called Film Convert Nitrate. I added a bit of film grain as well as some of the stock emulation filters and I set it to around 40%. Looking at my image, I still felt that his skin tones kind of blended in too much with the couch and the background. So I put in a color filter separating his skin tones and pushing a little bit of teal into the mid-tones in the background. The last thing I had to do now was add a bit of sharpening and that's it. That's how I got the final color grade. I hope you liked the cinematic breakdown of this rather simple interview setup, but it's still one of my favorite. And if you want to learn more about interviews, how to shoot them, how to choose your compositions, your angles, different lighting for storytelling, how to record crisp audio and much, much more, then make sure to sign up to my interview masterclass with the link down in the description below. Regardless, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, then please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate you subscribing for more cinematography breakdown coming in the near future when I took my new Komodo X out on some big sets so make sure to hit that subscribe button and I hope to see you on the next one.